Jesus. Is that the church say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. What a, what a perfect thing to do. Amen. To praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, if I can add to that, I would say what a perfect mindset to have to be willing to come to the house of prayer and to praise him for who he is and who he have always been. Amen. And for who he will always be. And that is God. God all by himself. Mm -hmm. God is able to do all things. Yes, he is. God who said in his own word in the book of Matthew that all power has been given to me. Mm -hmm. All power in heaven and all power in earth. Amen. Amen. And so therefore we stretch our hand to thee. Amen. No other help we know. For he has so much power he allowed us to praise him depend on him. I'm not going to be long with you. I just want to share what the Lord laid upon my heart pertaining to this text. Okay. So giving honor to uh, the evangelist, Dr. Urban C. Jackson. Honor to all of the minister, li minister leaders, uh, members, visitors, and friends. It is also an honor for me to stand before you and to share with you what the Lord has laid upon my heart pertaining to this assignment given. All right. Coming from 1 Peter, 3rd chapter, 8 verse through 12. Amen. And so if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to 1 Peter, 3rd chapter. Just four verses for your hearing. Which reads, Finally, all of you live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic, love as brothers. Be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insults with insults, but with blessings. Mm -hmm. Because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. For who ever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from disciple speech. He must turn from evil and do good. Mm -hmm. he, must do, he must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer. All right. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Amen. Amen. Just four verses for your hearing. Here we have Peter, a man, a, a designated inter, pre, a designated interpreter, the messenger, a male man who identified himself as an apostle of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> but in today's time, we know him as the brilliant writer who was given the recognition as the writer who was able to touch base with God's elect, mm -hmm. these believers who were scattered all over uh, different regions on the southern 
coast of the Black Sea, scattered all over different regions. And uh, the word elect, uh, in the New Testament, it means uh, the selected ones. All right. Uh, the ones who were called to represent. Uh -huh. It means the chosen ones. And God didn't choose uh, them because they wanted to be belong to him. All right. uh, nor did he choose them because uh, of their race or their re religion. The Bible tells us that uh, it was all about the promise. The promise he made uh, with Abraham and uh, his descendants through Isaac and Jacob. Now the promise uh, was all about the commitment from God and uh, the commitments to God. See, there had to be a bloodline uh, coming from Abraham uh, that would reach that would reach David, and uh, a bloodline from David that would reach Jesus. And uh, when the writings of Peter arrived in this place called Pontus, mm -hmm. it was not one of those doctrines that we know some of the apostles have sent to different cities or some of the other speakers that the Bible speaks about. It was not a doctrine like that. It was one of those letters that he was basically saying to them, hello, uh, I know you're going through rough times, but uh, just keep the faith. All right now. Hello. Yeah. And so when the letter arrived, the message from the letter, uh, we realized that it, it could have uh, easily traveled or scattered as well to different regions from region, mm -hmm. from Pontus to Galatia, from Galatia to Cappadocia, from Cappadocia to Asia, and from Asia to all of the little cities around Bithynia, Turkey. Um, realizing that it was sent to these uh, believers, amen, who were called as foreigners, mm -hmm. strangers, drifters, names that uh, really represented uh, believers in the Lord, uh, being persecuted, but yet uh, searching to trying to find a place that they can call home places that, uh, that they could fellowship with other believers as well, but they were only accepted as temporarily guests. All right. Non-citizens, called as even aliens. But thank God for our faith that we can fall on. Amen. Uh, uh, a good thing to know that, uh, <clears throat> that there will be, no matter what, uh, trouble that we may run through. There'll always be a man of a God that, that'll come around. All right. Um, so they were basically just uh, in need of a word. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. And as I read this letter here the, about these strangers, these foreigners, and how they would uh, be actually be waiting for a word to come. Amen. I know that uh, some of you all probably remember this old popular commercial that uh, with E. F. Hutton. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Back in the day they had a commercial uh, that they would say that when E. F. Hutton speaks, yeah. everybody listens. That's right. Amen. That's Amen. Right. When E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody listens. Uh -huh. So I said that to say this, that uh, when Peter's letter arrived in Pontus, mm -hmm. I believe that everybody listened uh, when the message 
traveled from Pontus to Galatia. Mm -hmm. I believe that everybody listened. All right. When the message traveled from Galatia to Cappadocia, yeah. I believe that everybody listened. Yes. And when it traveled from Cappadocia uh -huh. to Asia and from Asia to uh, all of those little cities uh -huh. around Bithynia, Turkey, uh, I believe that everybody uh, listen. Amen. That's all right. And uh, the reason why I believe that everybody listened is because uh, these people was God elect. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. The believers was chosen. The chosen people uh, who were about who knew about uh, the history of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Uh, Isaac and Jacob, uh, they, they knew about the generations from uh, David all the way to Jesus. Uh, these strangers, these uh, foreigners, was worshipers uh, who had to hear uh, about the miracle man, all right. uh, Jesus, about how he walked on the water then how he was able to turn the water into wine. Uh, how he also suffered and died mm -hmm. for the re remission of their sins. Yeah, I believe that uh, they believed. And when uh, they realized that this particular letter finally arrived and uh, that it actually was coming from uh, one of the twelves, yeah. amen, and that was Simon Peter himself, mm -hmm. uh, I believe that they believed that there was a word that was coming for them and would strengthen uh, their situations, being that they were going through rough times. All right, all right. Amen. The scripture reads, finally, finally. all of you yeah. live in harmony uh, all right. with one another. In other words, uh, daily Christians, uh, our, our daily Christian's journey uh, it would be wise, amen, for us to actually uh, be more pleasant on our travel, amen. If we can actually decide now uh, to merge our decisions together, amen, as we even uh, fellowship with each other here, if I were to actually flip the script from where it was into their times and to where it is now and how uh, the scripture is saying to us to uh, live in harmony and uh, love your sisters and your brothers. Mm -hmm. Amen. I've been here three years and uh, some of you all have been here longer than that and some have not. Amen. But uh, uh, it is time for us to actually uh, to dwell into our uh, ministries even more um, to love each other and to uh, realize that not only the letter was for them, it's for us now. We are uh, the new Israel. Yes. Amen. All right. And so we notice that we have so many different ministries here as well. Um, time for us to actually uh, realize that there are different uh, opportunities. Amen. Uh, I noticed that we also have the, uh, the vision statement. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That is uh, in place. Uh, that helps us to um, it helps us to coordinate things together. Uh, and, and, and basically what I'm saying is that it, it connects into how the text is talking about live in harmony. Uh, with one another. Mm. Amen. This way we can become uh, one mind uh, as well as that unity of mind Amen. Uh, by sympathizing on issues. Uh, sometimes we may agree in certain things and sometimes we may not, but uh, we can also uh, come to uh, and an agreement to delete our disagreements. Mm. Amen. Amen. All right. 
as I continue on this message here, uh, I realize that uh, it speaks about uh, compassion. Amen. It speaks about uh, being compassionate. Uh, wish I had a little bit more room on here, but being compassionate and humble. Amen. Loving as brothers. And one uh, version speaks about loving your sisters and your brothers. Amen. Amen. And uh, we can do that if we uh, continue to actually depend on God's word. Amen. Amen. Do not repay evil uh, with evil. Amen. Or insult with insult. Amen. Mm -hmm. But with blessings. Mm -hmm. Amen. We experience life and day, daily about uh, opportunities that, that present itself in front of us, you know? Uh, sometimes on our jobs or even uh, in the neighborhood, uh, wearing uh, people have been unpleasant with their uh, attitudes over certain things. And uh, one thing that I know about uh, people that if you proclaim yourself to be a Christian, amen, and somehow or another you uh, use the language that they use, first thing they'll say that I thought you was a Christian. Amen. And so this word is a word that uh, should walk with us daily about our attitude and about our behaviors and how we will deal with certain things and uh, the only way I believe that we can do that unless we allow this word become a part of us daily Amen. do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult mm -hmm. but with blessings All right. we can be a blessing amen if we can always remember that the things that we do in life that it be done uh, with the intent that God be glorified all right. That is, people be edified. It says, for whoever would uh, love life mm -hmm. and see good days, uh, he must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. All right. Amen. All right. If you love life, mm -hmm. amen. And if you want to see good days, this is a good way to uh, be aware how you can receive that. Amen. And that is to be more in control of your own tongue. Mm -hmm. um, and realizing that having the tongue that the Bible speaks about that is evil uh, would be a quick way to be, you know, ran into the, the end of your days. Amen. Hmm. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. Amen. That is something that takes an individual to decide. Amen. You must turn from evil. Amen. Mm -hmm. We can be motivated, we can be encouraged, we can be uh, given examples, but it's individual. He has to actually make a decision in his own heart. Mm -hmm. And I realize that that is so true. That we want so much to 
be a change into some of our sisters and our brothers. Amen. But the scripture says that he must turn from. The person has to make that decision. Alright. And I thank God for my forefathers and uh, my aunts and grandmothers that that was a motivation, motivating an individual that helped me. You know, just trying to point me and push me towards the right way. And sooner or later, it will rub off to a person who uh, could be going the wrong way or could be changed, could be making a change. Amen. Amen. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Amen. That is something that tells us that God is always looking at us. Amen. Right. He's always watching us. And depending on us to be what we proclaim to be. And if we proclaim to be a child of God, mm. if we proclaim to be saved and uh, someone who God can dwell himself through our vessel, then we must pray daily. And ask God to cleanse us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. All right. This is a daily uh, walk. But God is a God that he hears mm -hmm. our prayers. All right. Amen. Mm -hmm. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Amen. God is expecting us to be a vessel that can somehow or another uh, motivate and encourage people who we know that do things that is not of God, but yet it's something about the individual can be made a change, you know? Uh, I thank God for the message. I, I titled it Humility in uh, Christian Conduct because it's a message that uh, is for one who have decided to become a believer in the Lord and how we should humble ourselves. It's about attitude. It's about your conduct. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, the fact that we may go through uh, rough times, but God is a God that will allow the rough times that we go through mm -hmm. uh, be, be some information that you can share with someone else that is going through maybe the same similar thing that you went through All right. and how God is a God that uh, has the power to bring you through certain things and mm -hmm. this is what Peter was letting them know that uh, you may be going through rough times yeah. but if you keep the faith yeah. All right, man. and that if you were to continue uh, to believing and to honoring that what you believe, mm -hmm. then people who do evil uh, may want to come over uh, and praise and to honor the God who you praise and honor. Right. Amen. Amen. I need and so, this is the re one of the reasons why we assemble ourselves back into the house of prayer because maybe, just maybe, someone would decide that they want to uh, give their life to the Lord. Uh, we don't know what the week have been for them. We don't know what uh, the new year have turned into be for them. Uh, sometimes it's good for us to look at things with 
a positive perspective because everybody who come to the Lord doesn't come to the Lord because they was going through rough times. Sometimes people would be willing to come to the Lord because he just keep blessing them realizing that they don't even deserve the blessing. All right. And so maybe there's somebody here who uh, would like to give their life to the Lord because whether you know it or not, the, uh, the Word of God, uh, I should say the invitation to discipleship, it, it runs along on the same side of God's Word. Mm -hmm. When we look at uh, Romans 10, verse 9, it says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, and thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Mm -hmm. 